This is a, an ultrasound study of a 32 year old male presenting with the complaint of severe excruciating pain episodic in the epigastric region uh, and uh, had, has not come with any lab profile or detailed clinical notes and or any other investigative procedures whatsoever. So the first finding that comes in, in view is the fatty liver. The liver is fatty as you can see that the gold bladder is appearing in black curve. This is the liver and this is the kidney. With normal gain settings, the uh, kidney is appearing much black as compared to the normal, the reason being the fatty liver absorbing the uh, sound waves, thus giving the kidney. Now, the otherwise, the kidney is normal. This is the parenchyma. These are the pyramids. Central sinus complex, outer surface, smooth. Now this is the fatty level. Here you see that the periportal fat is also less. Here you see that this is the portal vein and the periportal fat is less as compared to seen in the normal uh, uh, levels with the normal ecogenicity or eco brightness. This is the liver and this is the diaphragm, the portion of the diaphragm. Now this is the gallbladder with the portal vein as well as the common bile duct. This is the portal vein, this is the common bile duct, this is the gallbladder. So we see these three structures as normal which rules out any possibility of uh, gallbladder pathology. It's ruled out. Patient in left fetal decubitus post-shift. <coughs> Here we see that the cord bladder is not. Now this is the good view of the gold bladder. This is the gold bladder sample. This is the pole. This is the portal vein and this is the common bile duct in transfer section. So the uh, gold bladder is normal. Here again you will see a kidney which is appearing much black as compared to the normal. So no real pathology and uh, except for fatty level. No significant anomaly relating to the liver. These are the two veins, the right portal vein and the left portal vein in one section. So this is the transfer section of the left web of the liver ciliary. There is no evidence of intrahepatic bile duct here. So outer surface is smooth, that of the liver. This is the left lobe and longitudinal section. This is the ligamentum venosum. This is the IVC. And the area bounded between the ligamentum venosum and IVC is the quadrant lobe of the liver. Now, this is the portal vein. This is the left lobe of the liver. And here we are seeing the right lobe of the liver. And this is the gallbladder, with this being the portal vein. Now, having seen that uh, now, you see the hepatic vein, hepatic vein, now you see that the hepatic veins are of normal caliber, the middle, the, the right and the left, Asana. the right hepatic vein, the middle hepatic vein, left hepatic vein, all the vessels are seen normal in caliber, so there is a 
And this is the splenic vein. This is the superior mesenteric artery in transfer section, superior mesenteric vein. This is the aorta. These are the gases from the stomach and these are the gases from the duodenum. In longitudinal section, I am magnifying the view so that we can study the pancreatic head in detail. You see that the pancreatic head, the tissue of the pancreatic head is uh, not that clearly visualized, so the pancreatic duct is dilated up to 4.2 millimeters. This is a significant dilation. This is the calculus within it, which measures 3.5 millimeters, 3.6 mil 8 millimeters, yeah, 3.8 millimeters, and it gives posterior shadow. Now, this is the longitudinal section of the pancreatic head. And the head of the pancreas. Longitudinal section. Magnified view. This is the liver. And this vessel, longitudinal vessel, is the aorta. In proximal aorta, this vessel arising from it is the superior mesenteric artery turning towards the right side and this small vessel that you are seeing rising very close from the superior mesenteric artery is the celiac axis or the celiac trunk. So this was the study of the pancreas in non intersection section and now I am giving a 90 degree probe. Uh, a, a, a movement to the pro to the transducer and uh, again I see 
Now this is the zero difference between the vessels. And the left. The pancreas appears as the ring of Picogenicaria. This is the parenchyma, this is the parenchyma, thinned out parenchyma of the pancreas, and this is the pancreatic duct. This is the calculus within the body of the uh, pancreas in the cystic duct. Well, this is the subgenic vein. This is the superior mesenteric artery in transfer section. This is the portosuplenic confluence. And so this is the portosuplenic confluence. This is the suplenic vein, the landmark for the identification of the pancreas. This is the pancreas in transfer section, the body of the pancreas and the pancreatic depth in this region in the body of the pancreas measures 3.3 millimeters and the calculus within it measures 2.3 millimeters. The body of the pancreas by itself measures 9.0 centimeters. So let's scan the patient in standing posture as well. Because in that case, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the liver and the other organs will be, will be pushed down and it will become more easy to scan patients' pancreas. Okay. So now I am going to scan the patient in a standing posture. to be sure that what area I am seeing is the pancreas and not anything else. Is it this here? Here we are, transfer section in the epigastric region. I'm going to magnify. This is the pancreatic tissue. And here you see again. If I magnify and show you only the pancreas, the body of the pancreas in transfer section, become more clear. Now, now this is the pancreatic body, this area from region, this from here to here, with this being the calculus. This is the subclinic vein, the landmark for the identification of the pancreas in transfer section. This is the superior mesenteric vein in transfer section. This is the superior mesenteric artery in transfer section. So, and this uh, tissue that you are seeing above the pancreas is the liver, all of this in transfer section. This is the pancreas. This is the calculus. This is the duct. Okay.
this is the normal view in which we scan. Here you can see the pancreatic tissue is seen. Now I am going to scan this patient again tomorrow with the now this is a bowel, this is not the pancreas because we do not see the landmark, the splenic vein posterior vein running, uh, coursing its posterior border. And uh, if we keep the probe over here for some time, this uh, area will change its shape. You will see gases from this area suggesting that, uh, that, that this is the bowel and not the pancreas. Here is the pancreas. This is the pancreas. Consistently seeing the calculus within the dilated isolate there, now there is this is an isolated dilation of the uh, pancreatic duct. This area. This area is dilated duct, this is the calculus, subplenic vein, superior mesenteric cartoon transfer section. Aorta in transverse section, I will see. This is the I will see in transverse section. The ligamentum teres in transverse section. The liver. So, no matter from which angle I am scanning this instrument, the issue is that he is having an isolated dilation of the pancreatic duct throughout the head of the pancreas up to the pancreatic body with calcula. Now this is the longitudinal section. We are seeing that of the pancreas. And the duct is seen dilated with a calculus. This is the area of the pancreas. This is the pancreatic head. These are, this is the pancreatic duct. This is the calculus within it giving shadow. This is the <coughs> subplenic vein. So I have to defer the uh, report till tomorrow. So we, are, we will rescan this patient tomorrow after empty stomach, after overnight fast. At presently, he is not with overnight fast. And I will fill the, I will try to fill the stomach as much as possible. Thank you. Okay, now this is a study of uh, same patient yesterday we scanned regarding the calculus in the pancreatic duct which was uh, the pancreatic duct was dilated with fatty liver named Hassan Raza, age 32 years. Now today I asked him to come with fast, overnight fast. So now what we are seeing is today that uh, this is the gallbladder. Now, yesterday the gallbladder was not being uh, delineated uh, so easily as it is today. So the gallbladder walls are normal. The human is clear. This is the portal vein. This is inferior vein cava, and you can see the fatty liver parenchymal changes with blurred vessel margins. The vessel margins are blurred. This is the right hemidiaphragm. There is diffuse increased parenchymal echogenicity. And uh, though the texture is smooth, and, uh, because of the same reason, we were seeing that the kidney was appearing uh, black. This is the kidney. Now, our area of interest yesterday was the pancreas, because uh, just all of the findings were negative and the pathology we were seeing was in the pancreas. So I asked him to drink a lot of water while he comes to the clinic. He has done so 
and uh, here we see the pancreas. This is the pancreas. In transposition, the complaint was uh, initially episodic, but now constant uh, pain in the epigastric region. At times, swear excruciating uh, gets relief from antacids, from uh, Zantac, etc. We are going to magnify the pancreas. Now this was uh, the area of study yesterday in which we saw that uh, the pancreatic duct was dilated and they were calculi within the pancreatic duct. Now this is a superior mesenteric vein or photosuplenic conference. This is the pancreatic tissue, this area. It is seen neatly today. Yesterday it was not seen that the pancreatic tissue was showing atrophy rather. Now here you can see that this is the pancreas and this is the calculus within it. This area is the pancreatic duct. Now, that does not seem to be dilated too much here today as it was uh, being seen yesterday in this region. It measures 1.1 millimeter. However, the calculus measures 3.6 millimeter. So, in this view, the pancreatic depth appears normal in uh, its caliber up to 1.4 is uh, taken as considered as normal. This is the calcification seen and uh, the dimension of the pancreas, body of the pancreas is 7.1. It is less. The pancreatic body, this is the pancreatic body. This is the pancreatic body. It is measuring 7.2 millimeter. And the size of the pancreatic uh, body is uh, less as compared to the normal. Now this tubular structure, black tubular structure is splenic vein, which is the landmark for the identification of the pancreas in transfer section. This is the superior mesenteric vein and these are I guess bowel shadows, stomach bowel shadows. There was no evidence of intrahepatic bile ductectasia though. And you see that there is a, why this is a calculus within the pancreatic duct of a relatively atrophied uh, or shrinking pancreas. Because the body of the pancreas should measure minimum up to 20 millimeters. Now this is the calculus, it gives posterior shadow and this is the duct. You see that the tortuous duct is tortuous. Here again, we are seeing the transfer section of the body of the pancreas. Here. We do see posterior shadow from this uh, calculus and the other calculus which we saw was this 
and see the posterior shadow from this. This is the another calculus in the pancreatic duct. And this measures 4.8 centimeters in length and uh, and this is the another calculus in the body of the pancreas. This is uh, in the head of the pancreas. This is the head of the pancreas. This is the body of the pancreas. The head of the pancreas measures 11.8 and is relatively normal in size. So we see two uh, calculi in the pancreas in this uh, in this plan. This is the pancreas. This is the body of the pancreas. We are seeing the transfer section of the body of this pancreas. This is the tail of the pancreas. So, <coughs> this is the pancreatic head in transfer section and this tubular structure that you are seeing is the pancreatic duct and this duct may is in this region 2.4 and it is dilated in this region. So this is in fact a case of uh, chronic pancreatitis with dilated portal, uh, with dilated uh, pancreatic duct at places. There is not, it is not uniformly dilated and there are calculi within the pancreatic duct and the uh, pancreatic uh, dimensions are less as compared to that of the normal because of repeated attacks of uh, pancreatitis. Well, this is the portrovania at the region of the porta hepatis. And here we are. Now, this is the head of the pancreas, this region. Okay. And you can see that there are tiny calculi seen in this uh, this one pancreatic head in longitudinal section. So this is the liver. This is the pancreas. This area. This is the pancreas longitudinal section. And this is in fact the head of the pancreas. I mean, in the head of the pancreas, you can see that there is dilation of the pancreatic duct, and it, there are multiple tiny conditions seen within the pancreatic tissue as well as the pancreatic duct. And the head of the pancreas in this location measures 12.6 millimeters which is norm, with a norm limits. The patient having a fatty liver with a calculi in the pancreatic duct relatively small size of the pancreas with calcification is very much consistent with the ultrasound finding of chronic pancreatitis. This is the calculus, this is the calculus, this is the pancreatic duct and uh, Okay, now this is the body of the pancreas. This is the duct, this, this tubular structure. And we have seen that the duct dilation is not uniform. 
This is the calcification in longitudinal section. This is the calcification, and this is again the duct. And uh, this vessel, this tubular surface, is the superior mesenteric vein. Sorry, subplenic vein. And this is the superior mesenteric, superior mesenteric vein in transfer section. This is the liver giving us a good window today for the visualization of the pancreas. This is the calcification, this is the calcification. And you see that the body of the pancreas at the mayor is only 7.3 millimeters. And this is the diminished dimension. Atrophy of the body of the pancreas. So, patient is young. Patient is young, is 32 years of age, has a years long history, gives a years long history of uh, severe excruciating. Uh, pain in the abdomen and in the epigastric region. Now see this view while I am scanning. You can see all the structures very clear in this. This is this duct body of the pancreas in transfer section. This is, these are the two calculi. You can see the superior disciplinic vein in transfer section, superior mesenteric vein in the liver the bowels. Most common cause is chronic alcoholism, second being the chronic repeated attacks of acute pancreatitis, hyperlipidemia is also one of its causes. Then bowel disease is it do include uh, ulcerative colitis and uh, Crohn's disease as well. Autoimmune disorders should be ruled out. So as such, there is no bowel pathology in this patient, though his liver is uh, fatty.